Nikah is an Arabic word meaning love. And love, not just general love, but love in the um, shade of longing. Unrequited love, being separated from your loved ones or your homeland. Um, and flirtatious love, too. And uh, Sevdah is the musical genre of old Bosnia and Herzegovina. It was birthed in the homes of merchants and governors, Muslim merchants and governors. Um, and the men would sing it in one part of the house, the women would sing it in another part of the house, and sometimes with saz accompaniment. And as time went on, that music got out of the homes and went into the taverns and coffee houses. Then, with the advent of the recording industry, radio, television, it just exploded. And um, it became very popular all over former Yugoslavia. The Serbs loved it, the Croatians loved it, the Bosnians loved it. But it's in its original form, it was um, from the Islamic houses, the Muslim houses. It's fairly new to me, this genre. I've only been singing it about five years, and it's been since the Bosnian refugees came to America. And I saw their reaction to the music, which inspired my group, Balkan Cabaret, to add more Sevdalinke to our repertoire. And um, at one point, I was singing in Spokane, Washington, and one woman stood up in the audience, and she was from Mostar, and she had scars from shrapnel all down her arms, and she stood like this in the audience just weeping and I got off stage and I had to lean my, against the wall and I said I have to go I just have to go to Bosnia to the source if I'm a, if I'm have any if I'm a real artist I can't just sing this it's too powerful I went to Bosnia and um, after a very very long trip there I was exhausted and went to a birthday party right hot fast you know, first off the plane of a one-year-old, the musician with whom I was going to work. Um, then we went back to his place where I stayed in this beautiful building that had been turned into a traditional Bosnian home museum. And that night a huge storm came in and there was thunder and lightning and flashing and in the middle of the night I heard something go boom in the room. But I was so exhausted I just I didn't wake up, but in the morning I woke up and I saw that a book had fallen into, into the middle of the floor. That book would have had to jump, you know, about five feet. Anyway, I went and I picked it up and it was the Koran. The Koran had fallen in the middle of the floor and I took it down to the home of the family with, with whom I was staying and I showed them and they said, oh my God, it had opened to the page that said, you are on the right path. I think that music has a healing power, especially people who are going through hard times, especially children who are going through hard times. Um, I think that it can give, as it did in my life, it can provide the ground under your feet. And it's always there. Like my music theory teacher at uh, the University of Washington, Ken Benshoff, told me, you know, there's always this radio playing in your brain and you can just turn it on and there's always music there. So. Um, I think that you know the music is always there if you're happy, sad, what have you. And then in my work with communities, I can see how it bridges the generations, particularly to watch the grandparents and the grandchildren relate. For instance, if there's a folklore ensemble in the Bosnian community, like we have in Seattle and many cities, the um, the teenagers are learning how to dance and they might sing. And then to see the look on the elders faces it, it it just is so healthy for the community then you know the the bosnians came over here about 15 years ago in the from the war yugoslavia as war refugees and a lot of kids came over as little children or have been born here so this music provides a great bridge <laughs>